Hey everyone, uh, I get asked this question quite often, so I wanted to make a quick video uh, to give you guys some recommendations and best practices for managing customer accounts with multiple locations. And there's a good chance you probably have at least one or two customers like this. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into Gorilla Desk Property Management Company's account. And the first thing we'll need to do would be to add additional locations. And we can do that by clicking over here on Edit Customer. On this page, you can add additional contacts, additional locations, and edit the primary account's billing and service address. So let's quickly take a look at adding a new contact. An additional contact is another person whose contact information will be associated with the account. This can be a real estate agent for a property management company, an accountant to assist with billing, or simply just a spouse or family member of the primary customer. So let's go ahead and create one together. I'm going to give our contact a name. And a phone number. And save. So now that we have a little bit better understanding of adding additional contacts, it's time to create a new location. To do so, we're going to click on add a location. So the address name can be whatever you'd like to use to differentiate that location from others on the account. It can simply be the address itself or be something like home, work, warehouse, etc. The address too will allow you to choose which contact you'd like to appear under the service address on your paperwork. Down here, the bill to will allow you to choose which contact you'd like to show up under the billing address on your paperwork. So for example, if your account is a property management company with multiple tenants as contacts, you may want to add the address to, to be set as the tenant. So in this case, it could be bill. Whereas the bill to might be set to the contact you like associated with billing, which in this case could be Gorilla Desk Property, or <laughs> Gorilla Property Management. Okay, and so we'll just finish filling out the rest of this information here. So service address, we will say is 12671, uh, Majestic Isles. And then our billing address, since this is a property management company, we're going to go with our primary address. Okay, uh, you also have the option to use the primary email on the account as the billing email or you can click the drop down and select one of your contacts emails instead. If the account is a property management company with multiple locations and you want all invoices to send to the primary account holder, you can select their email as the default billing email on the account, which in this case will be our property management email. The billing email CC will allow you to loop in an additional contact whenever you're sending out invoices. Uh, an example of this would be if your customer has uh, an accountant that would also like to receive copies of the invoices as well, you can loop them in here with the CC. Below you have location notes where you can add a gate code or any specific instructions for that one location. Over to the right, when setting your messaging preferences, you'll have the option to choose which contact's email will be the primary email when sending a customer communication. So if it's the tenant, we probably would want reminders to be going to Bill as the tenant. Below, you can also apply a default tax rate that will automatically apply and uh, that automatically apply to any invoice for that location. And you can set that up right here. Then when we're finished editing the location, we're going to head and click Save. From here, it's uh, rinse and repeat to keep adding additional lo locations. You would just go through the same exact process. Uh, below that, you will also have the option to hide or show the total account balance on invoices. Uh, an example of this would be if you have three different locations, uh, each of them have an invoice of $50 that's due. Uh, so you hide the total account balance, or hiding the total account balance will only show the amount due of $50 on each of those invoices rather than 50. Um, and so what I mean by this would be, right now it's hidden, or I'm sorry, right now it's showing. So we're going to take a look at our invoices. 
you can see that there's a $50 balance already on the account, right? So if we open up this invoice that's worth $66, it shows the balance on the account, which is 50, and then also the amount due for this invoice is 66. Now, if we were to hide that balance and open this up again, now you can just see that there's the amount due of $66 and it's not showing the total balance on the account. Okay. Um, we also have a filter on the customer's account that will allow you to sort everything by a specific location rather than sorting through each and every one. Uh, this will make things a lot easier if you're looking for notes or an invoice for a specific location. And you can do that right up here. You can filter by all locations or pick and choose which one. And once you set that filter, that will apply to any notes that you can see, jobs, uh, and all the tabs listed here. So that'll make it much easier for you, especially if you have an account with a lot of locations. When invoicing large commercial accounts, you may want to consider using a statement. The statement will show a breakdown of any paid or due invoice within the specified date range. This way, you would not have to send a property management company 10 different invoices for 10 different service locations. To view a statement, you can click up here. On the statement, you can filter by location or all locations. You're going to set your date range, and below it will show you any service that falls within that date range, and it will show the invoice, the total amount, and whether it's been paid or it's not paid. Uh, something I'd like to mention, if you're using statements, you'll want to make sure that you're changing the invoice status to sent which will add the balance onto the statement. Um, and what I mean by this would be uh, over here, you can see invoice 507. You can't quite see it at the time, but it is a, that's a draft invoice, right? So if you look here, we're not seeing invoice 507 because there's no balance on the account. So what you'll want to do is, as you're working the job, open the invoice and change this to sent, which will now add the balance to the account and show on the statement as well. So doing this does not send it to them by email. You're essentially just adding the balance on their account. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and open up our statement once again. And now we see that there's invoice 507 and there's a $68 balance. The last thing we'll look at is how to create a job for one of these locations on your calendar. First, you'll need to select the time and day of their service. Then we'll choose the primary customer. In this case, we'll do Gorilla Property Management. And now that we have multiple locations, we'll also have the option to choose uh, which address the service will be for. So in this case, we'll say Via Lucia. From here, you'd pretty much follow the same process as you normally would. You'll choose the service type, add any information to the invoice, and go ahead and uh, create your job. So I hope that helps. Um, thank you all for watching my tips and best practices for managing customer accounts with multiple locations. If you have any questions, as always, you can reach us at 855-536-7470, and we'll be more than happy to help. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you all have a great day. Take care.